So hello again. Now for the topic of electrostatics and magnetostatics, we will be covering electrostatics first. In this video, we will be covering charge and current distributions and Coulomb's law. We will be covering Gauss's law in a separate video so that I can really go into detail uh, since it's such an important concept in electromagnetics. So first let's talk about charge. When we look at charge density, it will be denoted by the Greek letter rho, which is expressed with this symbol. So it kind of looks like a P, but remember that this is actually rho. We will usually be given the charge density and it'll be given in the problem as either rho v, rho s, or rho l depending if we are looking at a surface, a volume, or a line. Now, as a definition, rho, for example, rho v, will equal the limit as delta v goes to zero of delta q over delta v. So if you think about it, this makes sense. It'll be the change in, in charge divided by the change in volume as we make that change in volume infinitesimally small. Now that we know the charge density and what that means, we can go over what we will do to find total charge. We will look at a formula given, which is that the total charge is equal to the integral over the volume of the charge density with regards to volume, dv. Now, let's look more closely at to what this will mean. It basically will end up, in the case of a volume, in a triple integral with each boundary for each unit vector. And if we are going in any of the three orthogonal coordinate systems that we have mentioned before, it's also important to no notice that rho can be a function. So something important to notice is that dv actually stands for differential volume. And according to which coordinate system you choose, the differential volume will be different. For the Cartesian coordinate system, it will simply be dx, dy, dz. Now, for example, if you were to do the cylindrical coordinate system, one of the unit vectors is not a linear value. Therefore, you have to convert it into a linear value by multiplying by r. And same goes with the spherical coordinate system, where you will also multiply r for theta, but for phi, you will have to multiply by r sine theta. Uh, that is just because if you were to do trigonometry, you could see how in order to make the, fun the angle value a linear equivalent, you would have to multiply by those values. So in future problems and examples, we'll cover that and it'll be easier to understand. But for now, let's just think in, coordinate, in the Cartesian coordinate system. So now we covered the example of a volume. Now, this is the hardest one to understand. Let's try to visualize what it means on a graph using the Cartesian coordinate. If we have a charge distribution that is a square, usually the only reason that we would want to use Cartesian coordinates is that it is the charge distribution is most likely a square or something that is easily represented within the Cartesian coordinate system and usually not a circle or a sphere. So if we have a small charge over there, then we know that this kind of area has a charge distribution that is given by rho v. Then all we would have to do is find the bounds for each of the unit vectors. So say this is x, this is y, this is z. We have to find the value for the bounds of x. So say this is x1, x2, this would be y1, y2, and this height right here would be z1, z2. And so for the integral, you would end up having a triple integral that will be that q is equal to x1 to x2, y1 to y2, z1 to z2 
of row V dx, well, just for it to match, we will say that it is dz dy dx. So yeah, I mean, they're multiplying each other, so the order does not matter. Uh, but it's easier to follow if you match the order of the bounds. So that way you just know, you know, z. Z is for Z, Y for Y, and X for X. And that's mostly it on charge density and how to find total charge within a static uh, kind of distribution. So charge is when these particles are fixed. But if one of these charged particles have a velocity, then we have something that's called current. And so now let's go over current distribution. Say we have a cross-section, and going through this cross-section is a charged particle with a velocity u. Because we are in electrostatics, we are assuming a constant electrical field. And so we find this formula that i is equal to the surface integral of j, I'll go over what j is in just a second, ds. So j is the conduction. So j just stands for convection current density. So what convection means is that the electron that is first stimulated will reach the other end and cross our cross section. Uh, there's also conduction Current um, is kind of similar to the conduction and convection of heat. Um, conduction current means that the current is kind of like passed. So say that one electron was here and it bumped into the other one and so the other one moved, then that would be conduction current. But we're looking at convection current. So that is going to be what J represents. The S is for surface, so it's just going to be the bounds of the surface area. Um, with situations such as this one, where we have, say, a cable, this is most likely going to be a cable or a tube, then now you can start to see why and how cylindrical coordinates are going to be useful. Uh, again, DS is very similar to DV. It will be different in each coordinate system and for the Cartesian coordinate system it'll just be whatever plane it is in so those two kind of variable unit vectors will be the ones represented in this differential surface and we also know that J is defined as rho V times U the velocity of the charged particle. So now let's talk about Coulomb's law. What Coulomb's law is going to refer to is electric field intensity. And according to the law, we know that the electric field is going to equal capital R hat times Q over four pi epsilon R squared for a point charge. So. I'll explain what epsilon is later on, but for now let's worry about what this means and what we are talking about. So for this case, we are talking about a point charge. Let's go over what that is. A point charge is just a charged particle that is in a point in space. So that's all it is. It has a charge Q that's going to be positive or negative, and then it will have an electric field that radiates outward and it'll radiate outward in kind of a spherical form so that's what Coulomb's law is telling us with this R hat the R hat is stating which direction the electric field will be in and the magnitude of the electric field will be this part right here where now let's go over each term. So Q will be equal to the charge of the particle. We know that four pi are constant. Now the next term that could vary would be epsilon. And this is going to be electric permittivity. So remember this is not E, it's epsilon. 
And this is a parameter that will be variable according to which space we are in. So usually it's going to be a constant that is given. Usually they'll use like electrical permittivity and free space. Um, that's a common one that they really use. And then finally we have r squared, which is just going to be the distance squared from the charged particle. So if we had a, an observation point right here, it's an observation point, then r would be the distance from the observation point to the charged particle. And remember that this is in 3D, so this is really spherical. So that's why it's capital R and not lowercase r. So now that we know more about what makes Coulomb's law important and kind of the concepts behind it, we can see that um, intuitively the electric field intensity will decrease as the distance increases. So that's important to know and to note. Now this is only the first part of Coulomb's law. The second part will be that the force on another point charge will equal Q prime times E, which is the electric field density at that point. So if we were to put another point charge to interact with the original point charge that we had written down, then the force that this point charge would exert on the other one would be the test charge multiplied by the electric field intensity. So now that we know the concepts of Coulomb's law, let's look into another concept of electrostatics that is also important, and that is the electric flux density. Electric flux density is denoted with a D and is equal to epsilon times electric field intensity. So that's important for Gauss's law, which I will explain further in the next video. And there is also something important to remember is that epsilon, the electrical permittivity of a medium, will always be equal to epsilon naught times epsilon r, the relative permittivity of the medium. And epsilon naught is the electrical permittivity of free space. And epsilon naught, for reference, should be equal to 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 and the units are f by m and that's mostly it so thank you so much for watching i hope this is